Hello, my name is Travis Shaddix. I'm the marketing manager for the TNL division of Harrell's. And I'm here today to speak with you about minor elements in blended fertilizers. It's a very common product. We um, blend it every day. We're going to talk today about a particular blend, a 15015 with one unit of iron, one unit of manganese, and one unit of magnesium. Those elements are going to come from the raw materials iron sulfate, manganese sulfate, and magnesium sulfate. We're not going to necessarily discuss the nitrogen and potassium in the blend. The analysis you may use may be some other NNK analysis. What we're focusing on today are the uh, iron, manganese, and magnesium pr uh, parts of the, that blend. So what is the purpose? We, what we want to talk about is how those minor elements as granules in that blend are distributed as you spread your fertilizer. This particular blend is going to be spread at 300 pounds per acre. And knowing that, we will then need to know a few other things in order to determine how many granules are actually spread out. And the first thing we need to know is how many granules of those minor elements are actually in a given weight. So how do we determine that? We took those minor elements into a lab and we counted 100 granules of iron sulfate, 100 granules of magnesium sulfate, and 100 granules of manganese sulfate and we weighed them. At that point we know we have so many granules of a particular raw material and so many pounds of the raw material. When we blend it up we generate what's called a batch sheet which provides to us the number of pounds that we need to put into the ton of fertilizer. And in this particular blend we have 67 pounds of iron sulfate 190 pounds of the raw material that provides the magnesium sulfate and 63 pounds of the manganese sulfate. So now we know the pounds of the raw materials in the blend. We know the number of granules that are in those pounds and we know the spread rate across a given area which is 300 pounds per acre in, in this particular case. So now what we want to do is we want to visualize those uh, granules, that fertilizer being spread across an acre or 1,000 square feet or whatever you want to visualize. We're going to spread that out and those granules are going to fall into the turf grass and when they do we want to consider what happens in, in that case and how the turf grass is able to use those, those nutrients. What I've done is I've actually taken a piece of paper, it's, it's exactly one square foot, and we've separated that out um, in, in square inches. So there's 144 squares on this piece of paper and we've measured the amount of material that would be applied to exactly one square foot of turf grass. So what I'm going to do now is simply apply just the minor elements that are provided by this blend at this rate. I'm going to apply it to this square foot and the intent is to for you to be able to visualize the number of granules that actually get spread out and the distance between those granules. So as I spread these out you'll notice it's not exactly easy because there's not a lot of granules in in the blend, not a lot of minor elements uh, in the blend. But here we are, we see the granules spread out and we have to visualize this as a square foot of turf and this one granule in this case will be providing iron and the turf around that particular granule should be uh, at a sufficient level of iron. However, the other square inches on this piece of paper, which are numerous, they're, they're empty. There's nothing in it. And what, what that means is, is that that turf in those areas are more likely to be deficient in those elements. The, the, the elements, iron, manganese, and magnesium, um, will, will be taken up in the turf grass. But the question is, how far will they translocate? Will they translocate an inch, six inches? I don't particularly know that answer. But the... The, the, the intent here is to show you that it has to move quite a ways and in most cases it won't move that far and in the cases where you see no granules on this piece of paper that that turf may or may not be deficient. So let, let's briefly discuss the value of the granular application of minor elements versus the value of the liquid application of those minor elements. Both options have strengths and both options have weaknesses. So let's start with the granular application. As, we, as we've discussed, the granular application of minor elements is going to be less uniform. The distribution of these granules across the, the, the turf grass is going to be less uniform. The uptake of these minor elements is going to be subject to numerous dynamics that occur in the soil. So that's, that's the weakness. It's, it's going to be subject to, to the interactions and chemical involvements that occur in the soil and it's going to be less uniform. The strength of this granular application is you can blend it in your normal fertilizer, you can apply it with your normal nitrogen and potassium, and it's generally speaking a little less expensive than foliars. 
All right? The value of the liquid application is the uptake has two modes. You have a foliar uptake, and whatever is not taken up foliarly will be washed off into the soil, and then it will be subject to the up uptake by the roots. Okay, so you have two forms of uptake with the foliar application. Foliar applications also provide an increase in the uniform distribution of that element across the turf. The disadvantage with foliar application is, in some cases, it is more expensive to apply. It requires different equipment to, to apply it as well. So both, both products have agronomic value. Both products are widely used. Um, there's strengths and weaknesses to both. To summarize, minor elements are an essential part of any turf fertility program. However, in granular blended fertilizers, the amount of minor elements are very low and may account for as little as 2 to 15 particles per square foot. The spaces between these particles are large enough to create potential nutrient deficiencies. If you feel this may be a concern in your fertility program, you may consider adding minor elements through foliar applications. Foliar applications provide uniform coverage and enhanced uptake through both foliar absorption and root uptake. We hope you find this information useful. If you have any comments or would like further clarity on this topic, please contact us at contact at or on Twitter at Harrells LLC. Thank you for watching.